Suppose we want to approximate the square root of 32. We're going to do it using a fourth degree Taylor polynomial, but we also need to know how accurate our approximation is going to be. So we're going to have to give some error bounds. The first thing to do is figure out what function we're approximating and where its Taylor polynomial is going to be centered. It's a pretty reasonable choice to approximate f of x is the square root of x. And as a center, as like an anchor point, well, a number that's close to 32 whose square root we know, mm, 36, it's a little closer than 25. Let's use our center. In order to figure out our fourth degree Taylor polynomial, we'll have to figure out f of a, f prime of a, all the way through the fourth derivative of a. But we're also doing error bounds, so we'll also have to figure out the fifth derivative. So let's get those derivatives out. Since we're taking the fourth degree Taylor polynomial, I need f through the fourth degree of f evaluated at our a, which is 36. Remember, we chose a so that we could easily evaluate these things. All of these one-half powers, that's just going to turn my 36 into a 6. So these are the first four derivatives of f at 36. The fifth derivative I'm going to be using for my error approximation, so I don't need to plug in 6 to that one. So the first thing we're supposed to do is approximate it. So let's figure out what our Taylor polynomial is going to look like. Well, it's f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a, that's 32 minus 36 to the first power, so that's the number one term. The number two term is 1 over 2 factorial times the second derivative which is minus 1 over 4 times 6 cubed times x minus a squared, that's term 2, 1 over 3 factorial times the third derivative times x minus a cubed and now for the last term, we get 1 over 4 factorial times the fourth derivative times x minus a to the fourth. Now, we're going to actually be evaluating this, so I think it's easier if we simplify it a little before we actually plug it into a calculator. I'm going to do that now, but I'm going to just skip the video over the steps. So if you're interested in the individual steps, you can pause it and figure out what went on. So now our expression is simplified down to something that we'd be pretty comfortable putting in the calculator. And the calculator gives us a lot of decimals. It gives us this. And our question is how many of those decimals are actually good, how many of them are actually meaningful, and how many of them are not accurate because it's outside of our error bounds. So now that we have this approximation, let's talk about our error bounds. Now remember, we used a fourth degree Taylor polynomial. So let's talk about what our error is going to be. Now remember, for a fourth degree Taylor polynomial, our error is going to look like the fifth term in a Taylor series, a Taylor polynomial. So it's going to look like this, 1 over 5 factorial. It's going to have x minus a to the power 5. But this fifth derivative, remember, is going to be evaluated at c for some c between 32 and 36. So now let's figure out how to bound this. Well, let's plug in the fifth derivative of f at c, which we calculated. And let's clean this up a bit. 15 is 3 times 5, so one of those 5s will cancel with the 5 and the 5 factorial. And this minus 4 to the 5, well, that's going to be negative since 5 is odd. We can cancel one of those 4s. And actually, we can cancel more of those 4s. 4 squared is 16, and 32 times 2 is 16. And 4 squared divided by 2 is 16 divided by 2, which is 8. This looks like a much more reasonable way to write my error. So I know that my error for some c is equal to this negative constant times c to the minus 9 halves, and c is between 32 and 36. So something to notice right now is that this expression for our error is always going to be negative. I'm 
plugging in some number for C. I'm taking its square root, taking one over its square root to the power nine. All these things are gonna be positive. Since I have that negative out there, my error is always going to be negative, is definitely going to be negative. So in particular, that means my approximation, it was too big. My actual value of the square root of 32 minus my approximation is negative, so that means my approximation was too big. So this is valuable information. We know that our approximation is an overestimation. So now let's talk about what it could be. In order to do this, we have to look at what c to the minus 9 halves could be, but that's a little confusing. So let's build it up in stages. Let's say that c is between 36 and 32. We get this from the Taylor theorem. It's between my a and my x. So that means c to the 9 halves is between 36 to the 9 halves and 32 to the 9 halves because when I take a bigger number to a positive power, I get a bigger number. And these should be things that we can actually work with. If I knew 32 to the 9 halves, I'd probably know 32 to the 1 half and I wouldn't have to approximate it. So 36 to the 9 halves, that's just 6 to the 9. That's a reasonable number. I can't take the square root of 32, but something less than 32 I can take the square root of is 25. So this looks like 5 to the 9. In fact, these are equal. So now I have a bound for c to the 9 halves. That's between two numbers that make sense to me, two numbers that I could calculate if I had to without using another Taylor approximation. But what I really want is c to the minus 9 halves. And that's 1 over c, so my inequalities are going to trade places. And in fact, what I want is minus 3 times 7 times 8 c to the 9 halves. And because I added a negative, again, my inequalities are going to switch places. So in particular, I can guarantee that my error is negative. And it's between this number on the left and this number on the right. And these are numbers, again, that we could ask a computer to find out without having to use another Taylor series. And if I do that, I get an upper bound of minus 0 0.00001667047, yeah. and a lower bound of this. So if I think about my estimation, I can say, well, OK, it's too big because my actual value minus my estim estimation is negative. But I can count on maybe the first four digits being correct. First four digits should be pretty much correct. So I can say that this should be a pretty good approximation. Maybe make this a 9 if I round. And if I want to ask Google what Google's approximation is, Google gives me 5.65685, and that's where it starts to differ from my approximation. So in fact, I was able to get the first five digits. So we sort of said the first four should be correct. Actually, the first five were correct. So remember when we're doing these error approximations, we can't do them exactly. I had to do this dodgy thing where I said, well, 32 is greater than 25. Our error approximation will guarantee us that we're at least as good as something, but often we're actually a little better.